Today I'm going to talk about what CPS and ACS investigators are supposed to do in a perfect world. When CPS or ACS receives notification of allegations of child maltreatment, child neglect, or child abuse, they are supposed to take a series of actions. The first thing they're supposed to do is draft an investigation report. They can obtain information from collateral sources for this report. They are supposed to provide a child assessment report to the family, which identifies concerns regarding family stability and assisting them to identify services and resources that would minimize future risk to, to a child or children. They are supposed to look into the child or children's current safety situation. They are supposed to make determinations if there is a preponderance of evidence of child neglect, child maltreatment, or child abuse. They are supposed to provide counseling and training courses to the parents or guardians of the child or children. They are supposed to arrange the counseling and therapy for individuals at risk of physical or emotional harm. In addition, they can arrange for emergency shelter for children who are suspected of being abused or maltreated. The investigators can also bring family court or criminal court cases against individuals with regard to child abuse or maltreatment of children. Now, these are many things that are supposed to happen. I have been practicing law for approximately 45 years. And my experience is that in the majority of cases, these things do not happen. All of the items I mentioned are what workers for CPS and ACS are supposed to do. And in a perfect world, this is how the system would work. But not in the world we live in. This is CPS and ACS defense lawyer Elliot Schlissel signing off.